You are listening to another Always Moto production. The Emergency Department Podcast. This show may contain information about professional athletes' injuries. It may be descriptive and be unsettling to listeners. The information discussed may at the time of the recording be incomplete and be based on opinion rather than fact. That opinion is and should always be viewed as an opinion only. In short, possible offensive language, injury-based content, not always accurate. If you don't like it, turn it off. All right, listen up, everybody. Let's get this riders meeting on the way. As you all know, motorcycle racing is dangerous. Riders entering this event do so at their own risk. I'd like to remind you that he is not a doctor. That's right, Moto fans. I am not a doctor. I am a physio, and this is the emergency department. On today's show, we are going to recap the injuries from the, the injury stats from the 2021 AMA Supercross and AMA Motocross series, um, as well as doing a reintroduction um, of myself to the listening audience. Um, for those of you that don't know who I am, my name is David Hogan. We did do a little introductory show uh, that's before this episode, but if you missed that, we'll just quickly run over it again. So I'm also known on social media as Always Moto. I love motorbikes. I've been riding them um, for years since I was four. I'm now about 35. Uh, it's my passion. Um, it's it's been ever since my dad put me on his bike and took me for a ride. It was a P175 back in the day, uh, and then I ended up on PW50s. And you know, you know the story. Ever since then, can't get me off the bike. But the emergency department podcast, um, brought to you by the Always Moto um, Network, it's about injuries, and I know a thing or two about this here as well. So my background, um, I've got a master's in physiotherapy as well as a bachelor of exercise and sports science. Um, I've been in the allied health field in Australia for about 10 years now, working in both clinical settings, rehab settings, uh, and currently working as a bit of a consultant for rehab and workplace injuries. But this show is where I get to then start to join the love of motorcycles with the passion I have for the human body, physical performance, and injury recovery. So hopefully we'll be able to put some insight into those things for you guys and provide some interesting content around the injuries uh, that occur in our sport. So keep in mind, people, this is a hobby for me, and as such, this episode is episode one, and there is no sponsors that are involved with this show at this point in time. But if you would like to participate, if you'd like to support us, you like the content, you want to help us keep going, keep the lights on, as they say, feel free to hit me up. Um, my Instagram is at alwaysmoto. At, at alwaysmoto, um, or you can email me alwaysmoto2019 at gmail.com. Any support would be greatly appreciated, um, and we can help you out with some sponsor reads or anything along those lines. Now, I've been slowly building up um, to this point with the recording um, the injury data for the AMA events. I started keeping a track of it a couple of years ago, started doing some injury posts, which you can see on my Instagram account, just to try and put some more information out there for everybody watching about their ride, their favorite riders when they disappeared with an injury. I felt that there was always something missing that you didn't understand or didn't see, uh, and I felt that I could provide some content there. So I started recording it, you know, keeping the old Excel spreadsheet going, so that those things could be sort of tracked. And and then it got a bit bigger for me um, when I started contacting some of these riders, uh, you know, give them the good old, g'day, mate, how's it going? Wanted to check in about your injury. Uh, and I got some more inter- information that way. But then we really started adding to the data when I, I got tagged in a Twitter conversation with Jason Wygant, um, who was talking with one of the previous TV commentators about how poorly the injury stats are recorded in, in our sport. And I sort of took it upon myself to to sort of fill in that gap. And I've started recording as many of the injuries that I see both across the coverage when I'm watching it myself um, from all the injury reports and updates. And I've just compiled that all into one sort of convenient location, making the spreadsheet bigger and bigger every year, it seems. So I'm going to try and run through that information with you on this podcast and I guess the answer the question to that is is why you're doing that here and, and not publishing it elsewhere. Well 
you know, I've put it to Jason Wigan, I've put it to Racer X, uh, and, and so far none of them have really responded or, or kept that information and put it out there in, in any of the publications. So this is me getting it out there so that you guys can hear what I've got to say about it. Hopefully somebody hears that, and then maybe you will see it in a Racer X or something down the track. Now uh, that is my, that is a big goal of mine to try and get into there one day. So look, let's see how this goes. Uh, but here's some hopefully some information. Um, for that but you know for those guys out there if you do want to get this information in, into the into their publications uh, the good old uh, hit me back if not just the chat sincerely yours always moto check me out Instagram so look let's jump into the stats um, I've got those things here so over the season we had 17 supercross races and obviously 12 motocross races this year luckily we didn't miss any more with um, with COVID restructuring like we did the year before but in terms of the keeping the data, keep in mind that the data for the Supercross is kept from, for this this purpose of this amount, it's from December. So 1st of December through to the last race. So there's a bit of a one month um, or so pre-season. In normal years, there's about two or three months pre-season. So for this 2022 season that's coming up, I'm keeping data from October as the start of the Supercross season. And whereas the motocross then only has one to two weeks pre-season. Uh, so it's a much shorter period of time. The motocross went this year from the from the start early in May uh, and finished up in just into early September. So again, in Supercross, we have um, only 20-man main events. We have a 40-man two-moto format in motocross, which is a bit different. So there's some differences, obviously, in terms of how often people are on track. Uh, and, and how long they're on track for and how many people are on track, which can contribute to the injury. So we've tried to compare things as best we can, and this is what we sort of came up with. In terms of Supercross, there was 34% of the injuries occurred during the night program, as in the heat race, the LCQ, or the main event, versus 35% of their injuries occurring during the qualifying, which is the daytime practice qualifying sessions that you don't generally see in the coverage. You have to have those early early day, um, you know, TV passes uh, on Peacock or whatever. So 34% in the night program, 35% in qualifying. Whereas for motocross, 48% of the, of the injuries occurred during the motos, whilst only 13% occurred during qualifying. And then for motocross, we had 20% of rider issues recorded as an illness, whereas in supercross, that was only 1%. So an illness in this term, we, we class things like COVID, uh, Epstein-Barr, um, and, and other sort of um, sicknesses where you, you, know, you might have had stomach bug, you might have got a cold, all those sorts of things. So there was a big difference, and, and look, most of that difference is obviously in that Epstein-Barr virus recording that occurred during outdoors. So it seems that that's more prevalent during the summer months with the longer motos and the, and the, you know, the, the dehydration and such that would come along with that training regime they do during summertime. Training and practice resulted in 18% of all supercross injuries and only 19% of all motocross injuries. So there was... So anytime when we say training and practice, that is those things that aren't on a race day. So those things that they're doing during the week at a facility, a private track. Um, so 18%, 19% for supercross and motocross, it's basically the same, but there's a fair chunk of injuries that are happening during the week. In supercross, 42% of injuries involved a fracture, whereas in motocross, only 29% had a fracture. For an injury in either series, Riders missed about 3.7 races in Supercross and 3.1 races in Motocross. So across all of the injuries, and there was 80 injuries recorded, sorry, 91 injuries recorded in Supercross and 58 injuries recorded in Motocross. When those riders and all the injuries were averaged out, they missed about three and a half races um, due to the injury across the season. Now, obviously, some of those injuries they missed the whole; those riders missed the whole season. Some missed no time; they came back the next week. But on general, it, if you got an injury in either series, you're about three and a half, three and a half weeks, uh, three and a half races you're going to miss across that time from that injury. Now, a couple of other notable things that we had here um, for the injuries. Concussions resulted in about 11% of injuries in Supercross and about uh, 17% in Motocross. Dislocations were, were kind of small. They are less than 10% in both series. Uh, ACLs, we, we had four in Supercross and five in Motocross, which only accounted for about 4% of injuries in Supercross and 8% in Motocross. 
femur fractures were actually quite down this year. We only had two recorded, which was in Supercross time, and it was only 2% of the injuries. Interestingly to note, there was a few common things in Supercross. We had a lot to do with collarbone and then the AC joint sprain. Now, for those that don't know, the AC joint or acromioclavicular joint is the point where the shoulder, uh, the collarbone meets the shoulder out on the end. It's commonly referred to as a separated shoulder. Uh, and, and they seem to be quite prevalent in Supercross and, and not so much in, in motocross. There was um, seven collarbone fractures and nine AC joint sprains, which worked out to be about 20% of the injuries in Supercross. And that was only about 10% of the injuries in motocross. Now, in terms of some of the other things we've recorded, which great, thankfully we didn't have too many of this season, Supercross, there was no, um, no illness or disease that was recorded, no internal injuries. Unlike the previous season, we had Austin Faulkner in that final round doing some damage to his spleen and kidney. Um, but this year in 2021, there was none. And that was across motocross and supercross, which was nice. And also the big one that's always the fear for everyone in motocross is the spinal paralysis type injuries. Luckily in 2021, uh, there was none recorded, which was which is good news. Um, obviously, it's not something you really want to report on too often is those things. But unfortunately... Hashtag injuries are part of motocross, and look, those sorts of things can happen from time to time. It's just not nice when it does. So look, that's a quick snapshot of the recorded injuries for 2021 motocross and supercross. Not too big of a difference between the things, but it is interesting to note those bits about when the injuries are occurring for night shows uh, versus you know daytime practice, etc. The other thing that's interesting to note there was that the time of a, you know an injury then meant three and a half races missed now of all those races of all those injuries and all the races that occurred for supercross if you add up all the injuries and all the time that they, the riders missed there was 333 races missed from injury in 2021 in supercross and in motocross, it was 177 races. Now, we're not counting motos there. We're just counting the races as in round one, round two, round three, all the way through the 12 rounds. We're not counting 24 motos. So 177 motos missed, 177 races missed in motocross, 333 races missed in supercross. So there's a lot of downtime for these guys, unfortunately, with injuries in our sport. It is a big factor for us in moto and supercross. Okay, Moto fans, that's it for episode one of the emergency department. Hopefully not the last. Uh, Future episodes, once this 2020 Supercross um, season will kick back in, we're hoping will be sort of a weekly thing following each round. We're hoping to get some rider updates um, and, and you know some phone-ins from them. See what see who crashed, who did what did they injure, uh, who's in, who's out. That sort of information. So please hit subscribe. Follow us on our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebooks. They're all that sort of always moto. If you type always moto in your search bar in your favorite social media app, you will find us. Um, you can read our articles. We do a written format of these uh, emergency part and podcasts. We do that over at fullnoise.com.au. Yes, we are Australian. Yes, we're talking about the American AMA series. It's just my passion area. I like doing that stuff. So be uh, so check us out on all those areas. Read the stuff on Full Noise. And remember, be fast on track. Try to be safe. If you can't, I'll be seeing you in the emergency room. Thanks for listening, guys.